Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be watching. One of the most powerful features of Microsoft Excel is also the one that absolute beginners have a little bit of trouble understanding the concept, and that is the IF function. There are some basic rules that we'll consider, and then we'll see how the IF function works with various examples. The main rules are that if allows Excel to, as it were, make decisions based on the rules that you set in the formula. If always requires three arguments, never more, never less. It requires the test of the contents of a cell, the result if the test is true, or the result if the test is false. And the syntax, or the grammar of if, that is the way the formula is written, is equals, because all formulas start with an equal sign, followed by the name of the function, in this case if, followed by an opening bracket. Then we test a cell. We tell Excel which cell we want tested, and then show a result if that test is true. If the test is true, then the formula stops and shows us the result. But if the result is false, it will show us that result. So that's the syntax or the grammar of if. If you need to see a result as text, then you need to enclose the text in the formula in double quotes, as we shall see. Again, because it's a formula, it must begin with an equal sign. And also, as we'll see in a, an example of a uh, uh, more advanced if uh, formula, we can have more than one if statement in our formula. We'll see how that works. There are various test symbols that we use in our test. That is greater than, the greater than symbol, the less than symbol, the equal sign, or the not equal sign there. So let's look at some examples. In this particular example, we'll be looking at this formula first, here in the um, uh, formula that is in this cell here. Now, the formula in the cell says equals if F4, that is this cell here, contains the word cat, so that's the test, if F4 equals cat, and you'll notice that I have shown the text in double quotes as per the rule. Then show me what is in F6. And in F6, a cat should not be given milk. However, if the word cat is not in the formula, then show me nothing in that particular cell. So, let's see how it works. At this stage, I have shown the word cat in that cell. A cat should not be given milk. So the test was, is cat in the cell? Yes, then show me what is in F6. A cat should not be given milk. Otherwise, show nothing. That is the two double quotes together. Now, if I type the word dog in the cell, then nothing appears in this cell because it says as the test if f4 equals cat then show f6 but if it's not cat then show nothing. However what if we wanted to test for either cat or dog or is neither cat or dog. What I need to do here and we are purely testing for either cat or dog or neither and this is that more advanced concept that I mentioned earlier, we were saying if F4 is equal to cat, then show what is in F6. Or if F4, notice how the formula continues on, because the third uh, uh, argument in the formula is if F4 equals dog, then show what's in F7. That is, a dog can be fed bones. Or if it's neither, then show wrong animal. So in this case, the test is, is the 
uh, contents of F4 equal to dog. If it is, then show me what's in F7. A dog can be fed bones. And remember that I mentioned back in the rules for if that the uh, function if always requires three arguments, never more, never less. Let's count the arguments in this formula. First of all, the test. The second argument is the result if the test is true. The third argument in this case, in this formula, is another if statement, which also contains three comments, uh, uh, three arguments. If f4 equals dog, show f7, that is what is down there. But if it is neither cat or dog, show wrong animal. That's the third argument in that third argument of the original if statement. That's where the concept needs to be understood. It's uh, certainly penny drop from a new user's point of view. So let's type the word cow in here. Hopefully I will see in the formula wrong animal because in the formula we said if it's not a cat, if it's not a dog, then show wrong animal. So that is how the if statement works where we ex can extend it to test for another particular rule. So we're testing for cat, dog or an animal which is not a cat or a dog. Take your time in understanding that, it will make sense. Pause the video if you need to, go back and rerun this section and uh, in time, believe me, that penny will drop. So the formula in this cell is showing nothing because the test of F4 is not cat. So I've said show, show nothing in the formula up there. If it had been a cat, then it would have shown me what was in F6. A cat should not be given milk. All I've done in this cell is to extend the formula with another if statement. Let's look at if with numbers and text. Here I've got some sales. Those sales total 74,000. Over here I've said that the commission, if B7, that is that cell there, is greater than 20,000, 20, then multiply B7 by 5%. If that's not true, if B7 is not greater than 20,000, that is the test is false, show no commission. In this case it is greater than 20,000, therefore it stops at the true result and shows me the result there. This cell, the result certainly greater than 20,000, so if B8 is greater than 20,000, then multiply B8 by 5% and show that answer there. Otherwise show no commission if that test was false. In this case the sales are less than 20,000 so there is no commission. So if B9 is not greater than 20,000 in this case it is not, then show no commission. That is the test was false. So again we've got the three arguments. The test the result if the test is true or the result if the test is false. Let's say that this person's sales were reported as 42,000. Not only does the total increase but also the commission will increase as well. So what we see here is the formula if B9 is greater than 20,000, multiply B9 by 5%, otherwise show no commission. It stops at that because the test was true. Down here, we are using this number to insert some text. So this might be uh, handy in a sales situation. And we're saying if the total sales are less than 80,000, then the future total sales must increase by at least 20% and we want to know what is the new target. So the formula in here is simply this. If B10, that is that cell there, is less than 80,000 then multiply B10 by 120,000 to get a number in there as the new target. However, if the sales are greater than 
uh, 80,000, then show target achieved. And you'll notice here that the answer is in double quotes because the answer is text. So let's revert this back to where it was before, 19,000, or 18,000 will do us. And let's see what happens. OK, we have to increase that sale total by 20% to give us our new sales target. So that is how the IF statement works. This particular video you may wish to view more than once because understanding IF is not quite as easy as the auto sum formula. Uh, it's probably not quite as easy as the VLOOKUP formula which is in the previous, uh, previous upload. However, once you understand how to use IF you can have Excel make decisions for you and show results based on the test of cells. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, this is the uh, statement number 10 in um, uh, the, the Excel for Absolute Beginners, um, the upload number 10. There will be one more where we'll bring together all of the things that we have learned so far in the Excel for Absolute Beginners. By subscribing, you'll be automatically advised when the uh, upload is available to you. Again, thank you for watching. Bye for now.